The High Court in London is to hear a case over the use of uranium-enhanced weapons by U.S.-led forces during the infamous Iraqi battle of Fallujah back in 2005. This following a number of reports alleging their use was much more widespread than originally thought. Well, let's now talk to Christopher Busby. He's the co-author of two such reports and a visiting professor at the School of Biomedical Studies, the University of Ulster. And, uh, Christopher, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Before we start, I would just like to give a warning that uh, we will be showing some images uh, during this interview that uh, uh, some viewers may find disturbing. Uh, before we talk about your latest investigation, can you just remind us what you found in the first study you carried out? Yes. Yes, the, fir the first study was an epidemiological study, and we found extraordinarily high levels of cancer, very high levels of birth defects, uh, and we also find a, a change in the sex ratio, in the ratio of boys to girls, which appeared to begin after the Battle of Fallujah in 2004. But we didn't look for any of the causes. And when you did look for the causes, that led you to your next investigation. What did you find? Well, in the later study, what we did was we looked in the hair of 25 mothers and 25 fathers of children with congenital anomalies. And what we found was uh, we looked at 52 elements, so we looked at all the possible elements that could be in the hair, and we found high levels of strontium and, uh, and, C uh, and um, calcium and aluminium and, and, and various uh, innocuous substances. But what we did find was a high level of uranium. We uh, did find a high level of uranium. And that high level of uranium, was it fr from depleted uranium? Well, no, this was what was surprising. It was not from depleted uranium. It was actually slightly enriched uranium, which was, was, was fairly astonishing. As far as, uh, it, was, it was not something that we really expected. And it led us to believe that, that the, um, that the uh, modern military systems use a whole new set of weapons which contain or, or produce enriched uranium. Um, for, for various reasons, which we're not entirely sure about. Okay, just briefly explain the difference between enriched uranium and depleted uranium, uh, just briefly. Yes, yes. When, when, when uranium is, uh, is mined, then it's, uh, it, it's refined in such a way that, the, uh, that, that one of the isotopes, uh, U-235, which is used in nuclear power stations and in atom bombs, is separated from the rest of the uranium. And the rest of the uranium, which doesn't contain so much U-235, is called depleted uranium and is a sort of waste product. The other, the other sort is the sort that's used in atom bombs and in uh, nuclear power stations. And this is the sort that we found in the environment of Fallujah, in the soil, in the water, and also in the hair of these, of these parents of the children with congenital anomalies. And we believe this is the cause of the cancer increases in the congenital anomalies and the other genetic effects that we found in the earlier study. Of course, the question is then, where did this enriched uranium come from? Well, we're not entirely sure about that, but we have some ideas, and there have been some suggestions. I mean, one suggestion is that the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people using this weapon have been covering their tracks because there's been a lot of talk about depleted uranium and its effects, and it uh, can actually be measured using sophisticated instruments. Um, and so if you use uh, slightly enriched uranium or natural uranium, then you cover your tracks and then you, you, you cannot be sued afterwards when people come along and make measurements. That's one possibility. We did find patterns which showed the existence of a whole new type of uranium weapon, not like the ones that used to be used where they just fired projectiles at tanks or tank battles. We found uh, patterns for directed charge weapons and a new type of explosive which contains uranium powder mixed in with explosives in order to, to cause a very powerful directed charge. And this is, uh, this is an anti-personnel weapon, which, which answers the other question why they would have used such a thing in Fallujah, because there were no tanks in Fallujah. So that's one possibility. But another possibility is that a new weapon altogether has been developed, which is a kind of neutron bomb, which uses uh, deuterium, heavy hydrogen, dissolved in uranium and, and generates neutrons through cold fusion. This is really a science fiction possibility, but it is a possibility. But um, it seems to me that both have the same effect, really. Both are as, just as damaging as each other. Uh, and what you're implying here is that they're saying, no, we didn't use depleted uranium to the question, did you use that? But in fact, that was a way of covering up the fact that they used enriched uranium. Yes, I think this is, this is a, a, the most reasonable suggestion myself. Many of the NGOs in the world have been busily trying to have the depleted uranium we weapons banned. And, of course, that's, that's quite right. They should be banned because they cause all these effects. 
But of course, then the military say, well, of course, we didn't use depleted uranium. And, uh, and, and they're inwardly laughing, I guess, because they've been using these new weapons, which are not anti-tank weapons, which are anti-personnel weapons, which are thermobaric weapons, which cause huge pressure waves and collapse lungs or char the victim. And there have been a lot of very, very peculiar injuries being discovered on modern battlefields that doctors have never seen before and, quite, and can't quite figure out. So we do think that there's a new uranium weapon out there. It's a secret weapon, and we... And it does cause these indiscriminate effects on populations, which are really quite horrifying and poison the genetic integrity of the, of the whole area where they are used and so, possibly travel around the globe also. So just to make it clear, it, this is illegal use of this substance, or can it be used in warfare, uh, or is this something that you expect to be questioned and people brought to account? I do understand there's going to be a High Court in London hearing quite soon. I mean, what hopes do you have of that, after all the compelling evidence well, you've got? Well, well, I'm fully behind any, any sort of court action to, 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 to bring the people who use this material to justice. I think there's been a tremendous cover-up of the use of this stuff because the people who are using it are perfectly aware that it's a kind of poison gas that has a delayed effect. Now, you're not allowed to use poison gases uh, in modern warfare under all sorts of conventions, and it's easy to argue in court that this is a kind of poison gas. It has indiscriminate effects. These effects are, are not immediately apparent, but they're much more terrifying for that because they echo down the whole generations of the people who have been exposed and these are not people who are combatants these are people who are uh, non-combatants who live in the area but also the troops themselves I mean we know that the Americans the Gulf War veterans have got a high level of congenital malformations in their own children but the urine measurements that have been made on them show no depleted uranium so the idea that these congenital malformations have been caused by uranium has been discounted and this needs to be revisited well, I'm sure what uh, you've been telling us about is going to cause uh, quite an impact. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much indeed, Christopher Busby, for joining us live there. Biomedical Studies Department, University of Ulster, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.